Hi, welcome to the vlog. I almost started this video with a Q and A, <laughs> then I remembered the Universal Standard sample sale is going on now. I just want to tell you guys about this because Universal Standard makes some of my favorite things in the world, <laughs> and I wanted to be able to show you while they're on sale. It's from today, July the 19th, the day you're watching this, until August 1st. Go at the beginning because things do sell out, especially once they start putting out the influencer ads. Things sell out in like the most popular sizes, which I would say is my size <laughs> first. So this is the universal standard next to naked bodysuit. This is not like an ad of make believe. This is something that you guys have seen me wear over and over for years. I have this in olive, I have this in blue, have two of them in black. I gifted one of my blue ones to my friend Natalie because I was like, you have to try this. I wear it during bounce, I wear it during yoga, I wear them out to the grocery store. I love <laughs> these bodysuits. This is the next to naked. I also have more of like a pajama style of these um, that have two pockets in the front with a drop crotch. I showed those during the holidays and if those are on sale, I'll link them down below. But these are pretty, they're pretty spendy. They're a little pricey, but right now I think it's doable. So I wanted to share it. I know I seem very serious right now, but I just love them and I want you to be able to get them if you want. Perfect length for me. Love them, love them, love them. Like I said, I do wear them to the grocery store. This is um, a T-Rex shirt that I got during the holidays. I got this for free. Um, this was my free gift with purchase during the holidays when I bought the other jumpsuits that I mentioned. And I'll just wear this with a little like long cardigan and my next to naked. But these are my favorite. I love this color. So nice. So um, these are things that I haven't tried before. This is just like a little button over shirt. I went for this like green color because I'm into earthy things at the moment. It buttons all the way down. It has this pocket, no, all the way down the front and there's buttons all the way up to the armpit. So you can get a real flowy moment out of this. <laughs> you could definitely wear it like as a dress. You could wear it as a cover up. So both of the items I'm wearing is their size large um, in universal standard. So really nice, not too tight on the arms. I have really big arms. This is the large and it's like a nice flowy look. Like you can see, I have it unbuttoned in the middle. You can button it um, down a little bit more if you want. You can unbutton the sides. I'm sure that you could like belt this and then it will look cute. And then wear it with like a little wedge or something. Yeah, just a little belt. Pull it up a little. Belt it. Be cute. I love how flowy in the slits. I still have on my bodysuit under here, but imagine it without and with a bra. <laughs> this is just cute and just like flowy, easy breezy. It reminds me of the things that straight size girls can wear and it's hard to get away with in plus or like find in plus, which is why I really like it. I think they have a couple more colors. I don't know if all of them are on the sale, but um, I'll link it down below. I really like this. I'm gonna open it up to put over the next item, which is one of my faves as well, the Geneva dress. I have two Geneva dresses. And I don't know if Geneva dresses are still under the Fit Liberty. Fit Liberty used to be something Universal Standard did. I'll check and see if they still do. It was basically because their items are pretty pricey that if you went up or down a size in the year that you bought your item, you could reach out to them. They'd recycle your old one and then send you one in your new size, which I thought like amazing. Um, but yeah, this one looks like open. Cute, right? Can you imagine this over a swimsuit or just over like a two piece set? It's super lightweight. Like it's not going to kill you in the summer. And then you still have those slits on the side. Just a nice little versatile piece. And I love that it's like maxi length. Oh my gosh. In love. Okay, I'm going to put on 
a bra so that I can show you the Geneva dress. This is the infamous Geneva dress. <laughs> I size up to an extra large in this because I like the dramatic, really asymmetric angle hitting right above my ankle. So cute with wedges, so cute with sneakers. <laughs> I love my Geneva. It also comes in petite length, so if you're a little shorter, I'm 5'4". I do have a petite in black. Could be an option. And you can go true to size if you like more of a bodycon type fit. This would be really cute belted. Belted, see? Little sandal. Super cute, just a casual, nice t-shirt dress that has a little bit more interest. The sleeve comes down to a great length. I love the Geneva, it's just a basic. You could wear that cute over shirt over it if you want it to. They also have this in, I think, black. But if you want it to keep it earthy, you could definitely do these two together. I feel like someone's art teacher, and I love it. So single cell going on, I'll link it down below. I was gonna start this video, like I said, <laughs> with a Q&A, but the Q&A was so long, I didn't want you to miss this. So let's go to Eden of the future answering a bunch of questions for you guys, then the vlog. Dream team, stick together and make history. Golden there are a lot of cues after the last video and over on Instagram. It's a little dark in here. It's supposed to be 110 today. So I haven't opened all of the blinds, but I've opened some of them. There will be a regular vlog after this Q&A, so if you don't wanna watch this part, feel free to skip through. It's just a little bit of clarification from my last video and just little curiosities that you all had. I just woke up, I'm still sipping on my coffee. This is a reused cup. Um, it was a little refresher thing yesterday, I just put my coffee in it, so I will be sipping that throughout. <clears throat> but, um, after my last video, a lot of you gathered that we'd likely be moving out of Texas. The reason I'm saying likely is because anything can happen, which is why I'm not laying every single thing out there. It's easier to tell you when it happens than have to go back and explain why things that we thought would happen didn't happen, if that makes sense. So um, we are 90% moving out of the state of Texas to a different state. And we also don't want a ton of negativity around it because like anything on the internet, there is positivity of course, but people really like have strong feelings about certain states, certain locations. So we just wanna keep it like our opinion and the opinion of like our immediate friends and family and I'm sure that you guys can understand that because I'm sure you've had similar situations in your life where you're like I wish I would have just kept this to myself <laughs> so the first um thing a lot of these questions are about the boy but there's also my boyfriend is just short people always ask that um and then there are some things about like skincare different states specifically etc um the first question is would you ever think about moving back to california again absolutely we love california california is my heart home it's expensive we can make it work <laughs> but it's expensive um the benefits of california definitely outweigh what i would consider like not even the negatives necessarily but the struggles but i don't know I feel like at some point in life we could likely end up living in California. I like it. The next thing is how did I like living in Colorado? Someone is considering moving there. I didn't appreciate Colorado as much as I should have because I was an adolescent and a teenager when I lived there. If you don't know, I grew up in, Cal in Colorado. I went from preschool to the end of high school in Colorado. Colorado for me was extremely boring because when you're a teenager, it's boring to be in a city that is primarily family focused, like raising families. And I lived in Colorado Springs specifically. So as a teen, like 18-ish, going to Denver was the only fun we got because Colorado Springs didn't have a lot going on. 
but some of my best friends still live there now and there are a lot more young couples and singles moving to Colorado opening more cool things when I lived in Colorado there was like two gyms there wasn't a spin studio there weren't dance classes there was an f45 like there's more stuff that I would do there now than there was before but the weather is great global warming's kind of changing that it's not as great as it used to be like temperature wise in the summer but um I think I would appreciate Colorado more now in my 30s than I did as an 18 year old the next thing said are you excited to be living living with the boy and his marriage anywhere in the future yes we're excited and nervous to be living together I really love my personal space so that is definitely a priority in our new place to make sure that we still have adequate space to have our own alone time and have our own decor and that kind of thing in our respective spaces um there's a lot of questions about marriage and this may or may not surprise you guys but i don't necessarily it's not that i don't believe i don't believe in marriage for myself necessarily if we had to for some reason we would but i don't see the necessity of it i also don't like the government that deep in my business i don't like that in certain states if you're pregnant you can't even get divorced like the fact that marriage would strip back some of your rights is like annoying to me reasons we would get married if it were if we found it necess necessary for travel like having access to each other in emergency situations but we could do like some kind of domestic partnership for that i don't know and also if in the future we chose to foster children most fostering agencies do not let long-term partnerships foster children you have to be married for at least a year so single people can foster married people can foster if you've been married for um, you know at least a year you typically can't have other people living in your house if you're the sole foster parent unless they are like related so that is something maybe in our later 40s 50s we would explore if that was something that was necessary in order to like foster or to adopt or anything like that but for right now we have we feel like we have a commitment level that is good for us. We like the trajectory of our relationship. I like having my own last name. Um, I feel like I am very much a Bryant and I plan on staying a Bryant. <laughs> so no, obviously this is no disrespect to anyone who's married or who chooses mar marriage or sees um, marriage as their ultimate goal. It's just not for me and he respects that about me but he also knows that if that was something he really really wanted it would be a discussion because i'm an open partner but marriage is not necessarily important to me how does your family feel about you moving away from texas with the boy we have mixed <laughs> reactions through our family as you can imagine um the older the family member gets the more they would like to keep us close but i think that family obligation is the reason that a lot of people end up with regret in life and we don't want that to be us we're young we want to travel we want to experience different locations different states different community and i think a lot of people feel like this like I said, obligation to stay with their family is like, my parents took care of me, so now it's my time to take care of them, or we need to be close, or whatever it is, but we don't really feel that. I don't think anyone asked to be here. Like, your parents choose to have you, and it's not your responsibility to take care of them, if that makes sense. And I will say that we have talked about like as our parents aging yes eventually we will likely end back end up back in texas but right now while they're still young enough fit enough etc like we can take some time apart to enjoy the things we want to enjoy and see the places that we want to see until that inevitably becomes our reality so yeah family has feelings but we 
you know, will only be a short flight away. Um, and everything will be fine. <laughs> Are you and the boys secretly engaged? No, we have no plans to get engaged. Um, I feel like a few years ago, if I can find the pictures, I'll insert them. We did try on rings um, with my mom. And we both talked about it like in depth after that. Like that was definitely something that was for our parents. It's not something that was for us. It was fine. Um, yeah we're not engaged and we're not going to be getting engaged <laughs> will we be seeing um more of you and the boy being cute with y'all moving in together yes and no probably i feel like you probably won't see him that much more than you see him now because i've said this before in previous q a's this is my channel <laughs> so you will see me <laughs> um i'm sure you will see him more as we're house hunting apartment hunting whatever as we're looking for a place to live sure he'll be in sure i'll ask for his opinion from time to time or um you'll see him in the background whatever but it's this will never be like a couple's channel and i'm sorry if that's something that you're hoping for or looking towards but i don't want that kind of dynamic to our relationship where we work together as well i mean on a small capacity we do work together he does audio engineering so he used to like edit my podcast and things like that but and on a like camera basis that's not something we want in our marriage we have our own careers and we don't necessarily want that merged again like who knows like in the future what if we do do a couple podcasts or something maybe he could be more involved at some point but as of right now, I don't see that being something that's going to happen. <laughs> um, next question. Tell us more about your day job. No. <laughs> I work remotely for a company out of Canada. You can find remote jobs on uh, LinkedIn. You can find them on Indeed, but Indeed tends to be a little bit more scammy. You can find them on upwork which i've used a lot to just for like supplementary income but i prefer to work for a regular company where my insurance can be taken out of my check um the majority of what i make goes to insurance and i prefer to trade my time for that than paying into the marketplace because the quality insurance you get from employee sponsored versus marketplace is night and day in my experience so <clears throat> that's why i have a job um my job is not my personality a lot of people are very like what they do is part of who they are and for me uh what i do at my day job or a couple days a week job is not that so <laughs> i keep that separate um best leggings that aren't see-through if you're talking about for like just clothing like to wear out and about i really like the torrid leggings um for high end i really love the lululemon wonder train and for mid-range the old navy compression leggings amazing i've had so many pairs of them for like over eight years they're still kicking i just sold some on poshmark last year you guys are wearing them and loving them old navy's like the go if you want like affordable mid-range leggings um have you ever had gym anxiety if so how'd you get over it i'll actually link a video down below i have a whole like self-love body positivity playlist and one of them is about gym timidate gym timidation is what i called it but very similar to gym anxiety and how to get over it so i will link that down below so that you can watch and absorb all of the information is still relevant even though it was filmed a couple of years ago um when are you going to have babies we are not um <laughs> we are on the same i feel like this is the path that everyone expects couples to be on you get engaged you get married you have babies but that's not what everybody wants i've talked about it before <clears throat> sorry i'm still waking up so i'm like flimmy and stuff <laughs> um i would ideally like to be a little, like 40 pounds lighter than this at all times in case of accidental pregnancy um i feel like this is my top range of how much i can weigh where i'm like mostly comfortable um where there's only a few things where i'm like oh that doesn't feel great but like mostly comfortable here ideally i'd like to be a little bit lighter so that during pregnancy i wouldn't get past this point we're not planning on having children but we're in the same boat where we are at the age financial stability level maturity level etc where 
if we had a whoopsie, we would raise a child together. No problem with that, but we are not trying. But just in case, like as my OBG has told me, I take prenatals, um, you know, I try to eat good <laughs> like what's good what's bad whatever i try to eat well um make sure that like if there was accidental pregnancy that i'm not in like garbage health um so yeah there's that but we're not planning on having kids um let's see which three restaurants in texas are you going to miss the most so there's a new restaurant that we tried in South Texas a few weeks ago. I think it was called The Cook something, Cook Stand, let me look. It was like a hot chicken place and I'm usually not impressed by those types of places. I feel like they all taste about the same, but this place was like very, very good. It was called The Cook Shack and it's in McAllen. If you're ever down in South Texas, stop there. It was very, very good. Um, the whole like next two days we were like, oh my gosh, I want that place again. It was so good. Um, also, just as a Texas girl, somewhere I've eaten since I was little, South Side, South Side Market in Elgin, not the ones, the, the new ones that they've built. I like the original. They used to have a donkey out front that you could play with while your food was getting ready. So it's just like, authentic authentic texas barbecue love me some Southside market and hmm like what's another just like actual like texas place that's not a chain here i would it's kind of a tie between some of the food trucks but like the best pizza that i really like in austin is called via 313 it's detroit style pizza so i don't know if that's like cheating but it is only here in texas via 313 is very very good pizza so i think um those would be my top three restaurants i'd miss in texas is your family sad you're moving sort of <clears throat> they're excited for us they love that we're like young and taking risk and you know i think everyone should move like go see a new place like you don't have to stay where your family was where you're born where you're raised like go experience other places um what makeup do you use your skin always looks extra gorgeous so i brought this stuff out here because i don't really wear much makeup at all like obviously i'm bare face right now i don't have on any eyebrows or you know mascara or whatever in the morning i don't even wash my face i just use a warm washcloth that's what a dermatologist told me a long time ago so just warm washcloth to get off any of like the oil and like some of the stuff from the night before but i don't use any kind of cleanser then after that i've been using this derma e anti-wrinkle um treatment oil i got it at um not Sprouts, at Natural Grocers, but you could probably get it at Sprouts too or anywhere Derma E is sold. I know Whole Foods sells Derma E and it just has like vitamin A, E, sea buckthorn, rose hip. It's just a bunch of like good oils. I use this in the morning. Then at night, I just use whatever moisturizer I have. And the reason I'm talking about skincare is because I don't really wear a lot of makeup. And I think it really does come down to the skincare. Right now, I'm using um, the e.l.f. Super Hydrate. And this is like a gel and it has squalene in it. I really love squalene. Um, and it's like clear, it's kind of jelly. I use this and my tretinoin. That's pretty much it. Um, the tretinoin gel that I got from Mexico when we were on our cruise, I use this every night. And I just mix it with whatever moisturizer I have. Like I said, right now it's this e.l.f. Super Hydrate. I'll show you it up close. Um, I really like this one. I was using the hemp one before this and I like that one as well. And then Verse sent over a little package like last week, I'll show it now, like all the stuff that came, the different products. Some of the products I like, I did not like the um, sunscreen, it left a terrible white cast, but what I did really like was this Skin Soak Rich Moisture, moisture Cream. The Tretinoin, you can't really put it around your eyes or you're not supposed to put it around your eyes. So I usually do the first two moisturizers, then I put this around my eyes and then I do a layer of this all over my entire face. And what I really love about this 
is it reminds me, it also has squalene in it, but it reminds me so much of the Tula 24-7 Moisture. Like, it's the closest that I've gotten to the Tula 24-7 Moisture, but at a much better price point. It kind of even smells similar. A little less scent than that. <laughs> um, but it, the same thing, where you put it on the skin and it just melts in, like that kind of thing. Like, that's what I get with this too. And I've noticed a lot, like after waking up, my skin just looks very like plump. It always looks plump plump with the tretinoin but it looks just like very supple and young when I wake up so I really like that and then during the day if I'm wearing makeup it's the it cosmetic CC cream I love this stuff I've been using it for probably I guess going on three years now it has uh, titanium dioxide and zinc oxide as uh, sunscreen it's 50 plus and I mix it with the Tula Protect and Glow. This is my all-time favorite uh, sunscreen. A lot of you guys love it. It's amazing. It leaves no white class, but this is where my glow is always coming from. This is the most glowy, amazing look, but it doesn't leave you sticky at all. It's just like the perfect glow. I will mix these if I'm wearing makeup. If I'm not wearing makeup, which a lot of the time when you guys see me, I'm not. It's just this. Eyebrows, mascara, and a little bit of bronzer. And I use the butter bronzer from Physicians Formula. It has a nice satin finish, so a little bit of sheen to it. It doesn't matte down my face at all. Um, but that just adds a little color around the perimeter of my face. But most of the time, it's just this. This is what makes me look like I'm a glowy queen. <laughs> this. A lot of you guys have told me to try the super goop glowy one and maybe I will but I have like three tubes of this because I really stock up because I use it every single day because um, this protects against blue light as well so even if I'm not going to be outside a lot like today when it's going to be 110 like I don't have a death wish um, it just protects against the blue light from my computer or, or like my work screens or my cell phone or whatever. So I just wear this all the time and it does have like skin loving ingredients in it anyhow. So I feel like it contributes to the look of my skin and like helping to tighten my pores and stuff like that. So that's why my skin looks the way that it does. Um, obviously like I had a big dark spot here like a few weeks ago from where I had tied a bonnet too tight and it left a scar and i'd say it's been about four to six weeks and the tretinoin has like faded it to like this point it was like very apparent before um and we'll see with like this little scar how long it takes for it to fade because i've been putting tretinoin on it for the last couple of days so yeah um what's next if you weren't doing youtube what would your dream job be this surprised a lot of people in like my like my immediate life when I told them I'd be a cheerleading coach is what I think I would be if I were not on YouTube and obviously I could do that now if I wanted to um but I think that would probably be my dream job I would love to work in like high school theater or as a cheerleading coach I think those would be like my favorite things I don't know I sometimes I think there might be other things that I would want to do but it's hard to think of them on the spot so I'll just keep it at those two <laughs> for right now um what are a few of your personal short-term goals and where are you moving to where I'm moving to is a surprise I just scratched my face and I'm red now um short-term goals <sighs> I uh, to be honest I don't have the time to think about it right now like knowing that I'm moving in when I told you guys I said it was 60 days, but it is July 19th and my lease ends on August 20th. So it's less than a month. So I really need to like get my ass in gear and like get all of this stuff organized. So all of my focus is there. <laughs> Most of my other goals are like not, I can't consider them right now. Um, someone said, do you consider yourself a full-time con content creator? Would you consider going full-time? I have been full-time on and off. Um, if you're considering, I feel like everyone has a side hustle, right? So I make, at my like part-time job that I work, I wouldn't make enough to cover my rent. My influencer income brings in the bulk of my income so I would consider that my full-time job and that my part-time job or my side hustle 
could I make it work on just my YouTube income? It really depends on the season. Right now, like to the rate that they'd be raising, like 1560 is what they're raising my rent to from what I'm paying now. I could handle that. But like the next person moving in here is paying 1800. I could not handle that on my YouTube. So that's why I said it's like kind of relative. Um, if I would consider it like full-time income enough to cover everything. It also depends on like if I feel like doing sponsorships. Like sometimes I don't feel like making content for brands. So um, that plays into it. There's just a lot of things like, but sometimes I make white label content, which is where um, like I will make recipe videos or whatever for brands, but it's not attached to me at all they're just using it for content for their social media um so that their in-house people don't have to do it so i do some white label stuff like that too and i consider that like the influencer part so if you consider like that kind of stuff or like the recipes that i've sold like all of my vegan videos you guys know that those are private those are private because i sold all of those recipes to vegan influencers and they've been sprinkled through various vegan ebooks for the last two three years um and those videos would stay private until all of those ebooks are released if i unprivated all of those videos i'd make more <laughs> than enough to live and thrive um i don't know that i'll ever do that because i don't feel like answering the questions over and over because youtube will throw old videos into the algorithm and then people will be like oh wait i thought you were a vegan but it's a really old video so i don't really feel like going back and forth with that but if i did yes youtube would be full-time and sustainable full-time so yeah there's just a lot that goes into that um what has been the most positive change since eating meat again honestly healing i uh, i had like these reoccurring ankle injuries for so long when i was vegan and my body just would not heal and it was incredibly frustrating for me as someone who was teaching yoga and that wanted to do yoga like i'd favor one ankle over the other while the other one was trying to heal and they were just going back and forth injury 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 just like literally stepping off a curb would retweak my ankle and they weren't healing no matter what i do and for me with someone that has hypermobile joints and often sprains like my elbows uh like my knees my ankles it's more reliable now that like usually i heal within like no longer than three weeks ever i can drink some collagen or like if i'm eating beef or whatever it is i heal so much quicker now than i did before there are definitely other things but for me that's probably one of the biggest thing is like making healing on a normal timeline for myself um, and advice for a breakup I would say talk about it um, if you have friends that you can talk about it too and I don't necessarily mean get advice I mean just talk about it like being able to let it out I think is very therapeutic get a therapist if you're able to um, write it all down um, do a little ceremony everything that you think you still have lingering that you would like to say to this person any closure questions you have whatever it is write it all down put it in a bowl of water, let all the ink like go away from the piece of paper until it's blank and then it's like, okay, that's done, bury it, set it on fire, whatever you wanna do. Um, take your, date yourself that you wanna be dated, take yourself out to lunch, go to places that you've wanted to go, go to those places that your partner didn't like, like the types of cuisine that they didn't like, go there, take yourself to the movies. I think dating yourself um, can be a great way to get in some extra self care and remind yourself like what you deserve. Of course, I'm not an expert. Those are just some ideas that I think could be helpful and I hope that you're taking care of your heart right now because breakups are really hard. And I think that is the end of the questions. I did not think this was going to be 27 minutes long. So maybe this will be a separate video. <laughs> I'm not sure. We'll see. Maybe you guys like the long videos. So maybe it will be like a 50 an hour long video almost. But yeah, enjoy the rest of the vlog. <sighs> so all of my plants are going bye bye. <laughs> Since we're gonna be gone, obviously, and not able to care for them for about a month, uh, my mom used to be really good at taking care of plants, but 
Now her green thumb seems to be on vacation. So we're taking these up to my grandma. She's gonna look after them. Um, there's a couple propagations in here. Uh, one of these needs to be repotted pretty badly. And then, um, you know, this plant, plant I still have my, my snake plant, sorry. I just woke up, I'm like <laughs> so tired. Um, tongue tired still too. So I need to um, get the snake plant loaded up and take all of these up to my grandma's house. So that's what I'm doing right now. I'm using my little Costco box that I got last time I was there. And I hope my grandma loves these babies really well while I'm gone. They're so strong. These are all grown from propagation from my bigger plants, which my bigger plants were struggling, so they're also over there. But yeah, they look so beautiful. Hopefully they're okay on the hot car ride. It's like 100. Five today. Tomorrow's supposed to be 110. Ooh. So I'm going today. That's like Arizona type of weather. Texas usually doesn't get that hot. Global warming. Um, climate change. So I'm gonna go today because I don't think I can handle that kind of heat or my car. Neither one of us can handle it. Just got a Lululemon order in. Um, we got two packs of face masks. We really like these because they fit our faces really well and they're super breathable, which defeats the purpose of a mask i'm sure but um they're good for layering as well um most of this order is not for me they're mostly for the boy so he really likes the pace breaker line shorts we got him so this is a seven inch we got him a bunch of seven inches a few weeks ago and one eight inch of the bow line so he has i think probably like four in this length so he wanted this color which was pink clay and then we got him a couple of nine inches, which hit just at the knee for him because he's 6'1". The seven inches are like a little bit above the knee. So we got him uh, this green color. I can't remember <laughs> what it was called in the nine inch. We got him this charged indigo um, because this matches something that I have um, and he liked the purple. Uh, we also got him a black in the nine inch because he has a black in the seven inch just so he has a couple pair of black shorts. And then we got this magenta color, which I have a set that matches this as well. So he has those. And then I got for me just two things. Um, these are from the new hiking collection. These are cargo shorts and cargo leggings. <laughs> and I know that sounds silly, but they're not like the type of cargo you would think. They just have like some accessory type things on the outside. I'll show you what I mean. So these are the hiking leggings I was talking about. They're called cargo leggings. I got the shorts version too. So there's this little loop here for you to hang stuff on to. Hope this has longevity. Cause you know, leggings, these do feel different than most of the leggings I've ever worn from Lululemon, but this is interesting. And then it also has a little tie thingy uh, tag. Let me jump up really quick. So, um, there's this pocket here. This is like neoprene feeling here. And it's just an open pocket and it has like a Lululemon. I thought this was like a sticker, but it's a patch. <laughs> and then it also has like a neoprene inset at the bottom. And then on this side, there's the same pocket, but there's also a zipper to like put something in there, which I guess makes it like a cargo pant. I don't know. And this feels like I said very like neoprene as well. It's hard to zip, but okay, there we go. And um, yeah, it has that same inset. And then they're just like regular leggings other than that. <laughs> but I thought they were interesting. So I picked them up. I know you can't see my face right now, but just a little cargo legging. I thought it would be nice to have some pockets, but these are interesting because they have the tie too. So it's kind of like, jogger-esque but also a legging i don't know how i feel about this like lululemon patch right here um but it's fine and then i got the eight inch short version as well Ugh. um <laughs> they're pretty much the same the tie the loop the pockets do they, they have the patch as well which i do not like this patch right there um and the cargo pocket on this side they also have a belt loop in the back but it must be to like hang stuff from because there's no other loops yeah it may just be 
to like hang stuff. I don't know. But those are my new cargo pants they got from Little Lemon. It's always nice just to have black basic stuff. Hold on to your britches, y'all, because she's finally here. I waited so long for this cup. I've gone to DICKS multiple times looking for this cup. They always sell out. Finally got one on the Stanley website. They did have them at Williams Noma for a little bit, but not the color I wanted. This is like a limited edition one, and um, I'm gonna shut up and we're gonna open it. Okay, so that's the straw. See if we can pull it out with one hand. Uh, no, we can't. Okay. So this is the one I ended up getting. It's the floral and cream one. She's a beaut. I love it. I love you for the rest of my life. The Stanley Cup. Hopefully it lasts. And I think they have a lifetime warranty, which is probably why people buy them. But it's super cute. Prepare to be sick of me showing you this cup all the time. Give me love, give me all your love, oh, cause I want you. No one else makes me feel this way. Where? 